revved and rocking. This is the Riverhawk Report for Thursday, April 22nd, 2010. Baseball and softball in action yesterday, and they were winners. But we will start this report by putting the spotlight elsewhere. UMass Lowell thrower Jackie Barrett is having a terrific year. The senior has been setting personal bests just about every time she competes. An All-American in shot put during the indoor season, her toss of 49 feet, 11 and 3 quarter inches outdoors is closing in on the UMass Lowell School record and is the longest throw in Division II this outdoor season. So we start off this report with a conversation with shot putter, All-American, senior Jackie Barrett. How did you and the, and the, and the shot end up meeting? How, how'd, you, how'd you become a shot putter? Well, in high school, my sister actually threw the shot put and one day they needed someone to come in and she's like, well, let me ask my sister. So I walked over to the circle and I ended up throwing a little further than a couple of the throwers on the team. So I decided I might be good at it. Had you thought of yourself at that point as a shot putter or, or you thought of yourself as a sprinter? As a sprinter because I did all the sprinting warm up like workouts. I never lifted and I just come over after and throw a throw a few at practice. Is there a point as you, as you look at your career, is there a point at which you, you suddenly began to think of yourself as Jackie Barrett, shot putter? My senior year, because um, going up to my senior year, I wasn't really that good in shot put at all. But then when I made it to states, and then all states, I was like, well, I actually have something more in throwing than I do in the sprinting. Is there a point at which you suddenly, it becomes a passion, you love it? Not until actually college or close to my end of my senior year in high school because I gave up a lot for it. Like in high school, the States was after prom and then all States was the night of my senior all-nighter and then New England's was the day of my graduation. So I actually sprinted into my line while everybody's like walking up to graduate. So once you realize how much you put into it, you realize, well, I actually like I do, I do love shot put. Like, I don't want to ever stop, actually, but it's going to come to an end soon. <laughs> an All-American, yeah. and, I, and I think several times over, but is there a point that you also realize, wow, I'm pretty good at this? Probably that point was my first meet freshman year in college because first meet, I threw four feet further than I did in high school, and I qualified for New England's, and in high school, New England's is like the biggest thing ever. In college, it's, it's pretty good, and then once I was on the national list, that's when I realized that I actually have something in the shot put and I decided to devote all my time including lifting heavier which I never wanted to do but now I do. <laughs> Seems like almost every time we turn around you, you've set another personal best whether it's indoors or outdoors. Do you feel as though your best throwing is still ahead of you? I, I hope so because it's still early in the outdoor season that I should be able to hit 50 feet and hopefully the school record we'll see though but that would be that's 50 feet 8 but I still think I'm not giving up. What's it take to be good? Dedication I think. I don't know just putting everything you have into it. Don't be negative about people a bad throw it's just a bad throw but you you made it to this point so don't give up what is it like during the week how hard do you have to push yourself to get ready how hard do you have to push yourself to keep getting better which and apparently you're quite successful at that how hard do you drive yourself a lot because we throw three times a week and i mean i've thrown in the rain on really hot days and it, it gets really tiring but like i know that if i don't practice it i'm not going to get better and the whole lifting thing if i can lift more i'm gonna lift more i used to kind of hold myself back with that a little bit but just putting everything I have and I've been going up in my benching like so if they look at me and like oh you can bench more I'm like yeah I know so I'll put more like just pushing yourself to like the most you can. Do you hurt afterwards? I mean is the, does the body take a beating mm -hmm. doing this? In the beginning of the year getting back into lifting you're like, sore but now it's like lifting every day the next day I might feel it a little bit I hope by now I'm in okay shape not to get sore after workouts. <laughs> How much of being successful with the shot is about just being good physically? How much of it is about mental toughness? See, with me, I feel like it's a lot about mental because I used to be um, more mental than I am now. And if I threw bad, I'd like let myself be upset about that. But now um, at Indoor Nationals, my first throw was not a good throw at all. It wouldn't have got me to the finals. Definitely would have gotten me All-American. But I thought, I'm like, you're here for a reason. You've thrown better than this, so you can do it. And that's when the next throw, I threw my best at 49. Four, I think. So just not not giving up. Though you can't think about it too much, because that's when you start like feeling. I feel. What do you do to get ready mentally? I just tell myself that like you can do this. Like you're here for this reason. Like this is you. There's like no one else wants it but you. Like you want to throw far, I'm gonna throw far. And I just like talk to myself in the happy frog in the circle. Like let's go. I actually cheer for myself. <laughs> you have to. You have to be positive. What drives you? What pushes you? Like myself, Heather Oldham has the record here, and she was actually from my high school. So I've always been. Jackie Barrett, 
best since Heather Oldham. And so my goal is to be just Jackie Barrett, shot putter, not uh, not the shadow. So I'm pushing myself like to do the best I can. And if the best I can isn't the best she has, it's okay because I knew it was the best I had. So when I go to competitions and there isn't a whole lot of competition, like no girls following me, I just think like do this for you. It's still I'm competing on the national list. I'm competing to get a higher place. So it's not just that day; it's the whole season. Did you get a national championship? Ooh, I almost did indoors. Huh? Uh, I think I can. I'm second on the list right now, seated behind a girl. She plays eighth indoor and I know where she's nice and everything um but I feel like when you get there who wants it the most will get it and I know how much I want it so I really hope I mean there's I'm not saying there's no not a reason why I can't get it now uh, coach Barbara it seems like you guys have just a terrific relationship mm. she yeah I love Barb she's like I say my third mom because I have a stepmom as well so she's like my third mom just coming in here she since day one she has putting put it, like all of her like attention like on me I mean all the other athletes as well but like she knows that like I I want this and she's helped me she changed my form completely and I've trusted her 100% and this is a good reason why because I'm throwing over now now since last me 11 feet further than I did in high school so I don't think without Barbara I wouldn't be close to where I am now at all. <laughs> Four years in college, are there a lot of sacrifices one makes along the way? Yes, because I was, believe it or not, um, on the dance team here for, for two years, and then Gary was kind of like, you need to focus more on shot, like more on like track. And I was like upset, not at him, but just it's the truth, it's reality. In order to be the best at one thing, you need to put everything into it. So stop dancing, and it does, uh, I don't go home every weekend because we have meets and everything, so I do miss out on some family things, but they come to the meets as much as they can, and I wouldn't change anything. I don't regret anything. You need, if you want something, you need to put everything into it. That is Jackie Barrett, and we note, she and her teammates will either compete in the Penn Relays or the Brown Springtime Invitational this weekend. UMass Lowell Baseball working overtime. The Riverhawks winners in extra innings Wednesday, 4-3 the final. They battled Concordia. It took 14 innings to get the job done. Zach Roy with the game-winning hit. A soft line drive single to left scoring Mark Sanborn, who started the inning with a double and moved to third on a passed ball. It had been a 2-2 game through nine innings. Each team scored a run in the 13th before UMass Lowell won it in the 14th. Luke Wallace, Cam Nealand, Matt Jacobs each with two hits in the ballgame. Nealand had two RBIs. Ted Haley turned in a strong outing on the mound. He went eight innings. He allowed five hits and just one earned run. He struck out nine. Bryant Gilmet, the Riverhawks' fourth reliever, fifth pitcher of the day, picked up the win. The baseball Riverhawks are now 22-18. and 18. They host Pace University in a doubleheader on Saturday. UMass Lowell softball continues to pound opposing pitching. The Riverhawks were winners twice Wednesday against Bentley, 9-8 and 10-3. The first game featured the Dramatics. The Riverhawks won what had been a seesaw battle with a run in the bottom of the seventh. The 9-8 walk-off win came on a one-out double off the right center field fence by Heather Ross. For Ross, it was her third hit of the game. Alyssa Boris had three hits as well. Six players had multi-hit games as the Riverhawks pounded out 16 hits in the opener. The Offensive fireworks continued in the second game as the Riverhawks banged out 15 hits. Brianna Mahoney had three hits and Boris had two hits, including her ninth home run of the season, tying the school's single season mark. It was a three run home run. It gave the Riverhawks a lead they would never relinquish. Alyssa Bryan, who got the final two outs in the top of the seventh in the first game and threw a complete game in the night camp, was the winning pitcher in each contest. The Riverhawks are now 17 and 20, 9 and 9 in the Northeast 10 Conference. They've got a doubleheader this afternoon against American International. And that's the Riverhawk Report for Thursday, April 22nd, 2010.